Hi, everybody. So I'm Steve Peltier, and I'm with the Center for Research in Biological Systems and the National Center for Microscopy and Imaging Research here at UC San Diego. And today, I'll be briefly talking about some activities related to multiscale microscopy, and in particular, some of the tools that we're developing for processing some of the big microscopy data that we're now producing, and how these might be leveraged for this 3D virtual cell activity. So as some of you may know, NICMER is a national center that's really focused on the development of technologies to help bridge understanding of biological systems that lie between the gross anatomical and molecular scales. And we've really organized our activities around three core thrusts. The first uh, relates to the development of advanced labeling chemistry and, and specimen development technologies, principally to um, improve our ability to do correlated light and electron microscopy. Um, we develop very customized instruments, both to exploit um, what is possible in uh, new specimen development technologies, but also to push uh, multiscale microscopy capabilities in terms of resolution, contrast, field of view, and throughput. And we complement our activities in data acquisition with the development of advanced algorithms and cyber infrastructure, um, really to improve our ability to process, visualize, and share data, and also to connect knowledge to other informatics and computational frameworks. Now, through these integrative efforts, we're of course pushing on a number of technologies to improve our ability to image and visualize um, visible whole cells. And I won't go into that today because that'll be really the focus of the, uh, Mark's talk uh, at the end of this meeting. But I will amplify a very key point, and that is that the microscopy data we're producing is getting truly massive. And if we look at just one technique that we're exploring in the center, it's cut off at the top there, um, serial block face scanning EM. This is a technique that combines an ultramicrotome with a uh, scanning electron microscope. You're essentially rastering across the block face and then slicing off the top layer and then imaging all the way through the tissue in that format. And with this instrument now, we're also acquiring slices um, or single images that are upwards of 32K by four, uh, 24K, so billions of pixels per image over roughly 2,000 slices through the volume. So we're producing basically on the order of two to four terabytes per week. So an obvious grand challenge is how do we develop technologies and high throughput techniques to not only manage this big data, but to distill it so that we can have personalized interactions with it, and also to extend its utility for other computational methods. And one area where we're really tackling that head on is in image segmentation. Now, as data is growing very massive, manual segmentation is, of course, becoming a very prohibitive bottleneck. So our strategy is really to take um, leading algorithms and, and, and techniques for automatic segmentation and, and throw those at high-performance computing resources, and then marry that to a crowdsourcing strategy that allows us to scale our ability to go back and edit and curate the, the results of those computations. Now, of course, there's no such thing as a one-size-fits-all solution, so we're working with some talented computer scientists at the University of Utah, led by uh, Liz Juris and Tolga Tazizen, and we're developing a number of different algorithms, and we're targeting um, a number of different structures, whether it be cell membranes, the nucleus, mitochondria, what have you. And these techniques range from simple thresholding operations and all the way up to more sophisticated machine learning-based approaches. And, uh, we're also developing different ways to engage and harness the power of the crowd. So for small groups of researchers or individual researchers, we're trying to develop tools, semi-automated tools, to improve and accelerate the ability to do tracing and contour editing. And this is just an example of a simple tool developed in the lab by Jeffrey Bush called Livewire, which uses an intelligent scissors uh, algorithm to, uh, went away, to basically allow someone to quickly segment uh, membranes uh, with just a few button clicks. And we also have tools for also making it easy to segment things like axons and organelles that may have um, consistent coloring, again, with the user only having to, in this case, drag their mouse. Um, and this was actually uh, developed uh, and inspired by code produced by Albert Lin and Andrew Hewn here at CalIT2. But to really harness uh, the participation of the crowd on a massive scale, we have to use different approaches. And what we're exploring is the use of technologies like Amazon Mechanical Turk. And here we're using a small financial incentive to really empower the general public to uh, complete very simple decision-making or pattern recognition tasks that require very little effort 
um, or training on their part, but allow us to accelerate our ability to identify and correct things like false positives that are generated as a result of the automatic segmentations. And we found that by um, establishing credibility within the Turk community, we've been getting excellent participation. And some days, we're getting upwards of tens of thousands of accurate decisions um, being contributed per day. And this is coming at very little cost. These people essentially bring everything to the party, and really, participation scales with the size of the job. Now, in addition to developing scalable technologies for image segmentation, we're also developing uh, interactive 3D environments for how you take the models that are generated through these efforts and combine them with data that comes from other imaging modalities, data acquired at other scales of resolution, uh, and also other knowledge sources that really root this data into a biological context, both spatially and semantically, and then allows you to do cross queries between the two. And this is really the vision of the Whole Brain Project that's championed by Stephen Larson um, in, in the group. And you're seeing a movie of a, of a user interactively kind of zooming down from the level uh, of the mouse brain to an array of hippocampal neurons. And even though this system was developed in the context of the mouse brain, we're now taking it to the cell. And what you see here um, is a very simple interface um, called the Cell Browser developed by Jeffrey Bush. And here we're using WebGL technologies. And with WebGL, we can not only build very simple 3D uh, interfaces that work on the web. It requires no plugins. They work across browsers. So it's really nice in terms of extending across platforms. And you may notice that the navigation uh, here on the left borrows heavily from the um, Google Body Browser that some of you may have seen. So, All of these tools are really designed to work atop a very mature cyber infrastructure. And, and what you're seeing is just a, a schematic of NICMER's um, enterprise service bus architecture, which was really designed to uh, manage the flow of data going from instruments to high performance resources for archival and, and advanced computation. Within this type of environment, we're taking advantage of technologies like the Kepler Scientific Workflow System, which allows us to orchestrate how we um, present um, complicated uh, computational processes and, and streamline how we present those to our end users. And also at the heart of this architecture is an imaging database, in our case, the cell center database, which we've developed over uh, many years to be a repository for the data and metadata um, associated with the large microscopy data we're now producing. Um, in the past year, we've also taken a stewardship of another repository, the Cell Image Library, which is a cellular repository that was originally developed under our funding to the American Society for Cell Biology. And we've since combined this system with the Cell Center database. This is now the new public interface to the CCDB. And through continued funding, we're extending this interface to uh, not only be an entry point for getting at cellular data, but also to the segmentation and cell browsing tools um, that I described. So I'll just leave you with uh, a few obvious sets of challenges and opportunities. And the first is that, of course, data is, is scaling both in terms of its size and, and its richness of content. And, and our approach to this is really to build tools that attempt to harmonize the use of cyber infrastructure with the power of the crowd. And I think what's really critical to this is developing systems that really lower the threshold of participation. And, and we can do this through the development of very simple web interfaces that are, that are broadly applicable, having simple points of entry for, for, for broad participation, and of course, taking advantage where, uh, of tools like scientific workflows to really abstract away the complexity of using high-performance computing resources. That's it. Thank you very much. <laughs>